Greetings my friends. Today's lesson is about something called the caged system. Um, you all have heard of it. I'd heard of it years ago. I didn't know what the hell it was. I wish I had because um, my ignorance it cost me lots of sleepless nights figuring out how George Harrison played Here Comes the Sun in the key of A and yet it sounded nothing like my A. We'll get into that in a minute. First thing, before we go any further, please um, press the like thing or the thumbs up. Presumably you're gonna like what we're gonna do uh, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, and also download your free paperwork, which is on the blue link in the description box, which will help you understand what we're gonna do. It's easy this, it really is, but it's very, very important. It's one of those things that I wish I'd known years ago. And I'm not just saying it, it's true. And you'll be glad you've spent a little bit of time with me now doing it. Don't run off if the ad comes on, have a cup of tea and just watch it. It's re very important that we do this and you'll, you'll, you'll benefit greatly from it. All right, um, this is the last in a series of eight masterclasses I've been doing predominantly for, for beginners, all right? Once you've done, once we've done this eighth one and you've looked at the others, if you've not seen them before, then uh, that'll bring you up to speed with all the other things that, you, that I tend to put up on a, on a Saturday. All right, all the new bits, and there's about 300 of them already, so there's tons of stuff there. So let's look at this one, and that should bring you up to speed with everything else that's, uh, that's on the channel. Right, caged, what does it mean? It's nothing sinister. All it's referring to are the names of the five chords that we all know and love in the open position. For example, C, A, G, E and D, caged. That's all it means. First letter of each name of each chord. C, A, G, E, D. So that's that bit of mystery solved, all right? I thought it was something really weird and odd, but it's not. Now, why is it important? What's, what is it about this system? Well, let's, one of the things that we don't want to do, if you're playing in a band and you've got two or three guitarists, and say, for example, uh, there's a song and we're all, it's in the key of D, and we're gonna be playing the chord D. We don't all wanna be playing that inversion of chord, okay? So somebody that may have just started could play this particular inversion, the one that we all know. But if you wanna get a much richer sound, it would be nice if we could use another shape that we know, but still play the chord D. Hmm, how can we do that? Well, let's look at C to start with. The root note, the bass note for C, is here on the fifth string at the third fret. We know that because the string when it's played open from our tuning is A, A sharp, B, C. Now, if I wanted to turn that shape, okay, Currently it's C, because it lives here. If I wanted to turn that into a D shape, it would be nice if I could just go C, C sharp, D. This finger is now telling me that the root note there is D, so I'm in the right place, but I have a major, major problem. This knot here, this thing that's called a knot, that needs to be moved up the same amount of frets, in this case two. So what are we gonna do? Well, we could, we've got a choice, we can either put a capo on, to do that there, which will take the place of that. Da. Or, which is a bit more difficult, we would put a finger across, which is like a bar chord, like that, and we would play the C shape like this. Which is a lot more difficult, but that's the way classical players would do it, okay? So, do you get where we're going with this? If I wanted to turn that shape, now we know this is the chord D because this finger here is the root note, that's telling us what it is. If I wanted to turn this shape into an E, if it's D here, D, D sharp, E. Let's put it to the test. Oh. And that's all it is. So that's using the chord C. A key to it, of course, and remember this, the important bit, where does your root note live? You've got to know where it lives in its open position, so when you're moving it up, you know where you 
you know when to stop where to put your capo so if you're moving it here to a D da one two you put your capo one two to take the place of this all right so we've used C the next chord a we move this one quite a lot anyway when we're playing you, you know it's one of, of the two shapes that we move around a lot uh, this is one of them uh, the other being E let's look at the A now our root note for A again is the fifth string I always play it with these three fingers by the way I like to keep this free for what I'm about to do there's our A bass note and there's our A major chord if I wanted to turn this shape into a C or let's let's turn it into a D shall we like let's pretend that somebody's playing that D the guy playing the C is doing this one and we need to find another one I'd say well okay well I'll try and use the A shape and make a D out of this how would I do it well A I'd move it up but I have to put I have to take this so A sharp B C C sharp and D oh. So we've got three inversions now playing the same chord and if you're in a recording studio you're playing live then that's going to sound really really fantastic and when you spread them around in the stereo picture then it gets really exciting okay the next one is a g so you've got three players now and somebody else has walked in he wants to play the chord d and you say well you know you go find your own you go find another way of doing it so he's going to say okay well i only know the chord g how can i turn the g into the chord D. I'm going to put the shape G, I should say, into the chord D. Well, when we play the chord G, our root note, our bass note, lives here. How do we know that? Because we know that that's E when it's played open, F at fret one, E, F, F sharp, and G. Whenever you're not sure of a root note, always go back to where you do know your datum point, your open strings when you're tuning up. So we know that that's our G note. Now if I want to turn that into a, the chord D, I would do this G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. And I'm going to be clever and put a you know a finger here <laughs> it's difficult you never see anyone doing it like this so there's the inversion if using the G shape ah, here's the other one with the A ah, here's the one using the C moved up if I can get my fingers in the right place ah, and the easy one ah. all right so we've done the G now we're gonna do the um, the E shape now this is one that we move around a lot as well now we know that the chord E the root note is here now we'll have done this already we already know a bit of this because presumably we will have attempted to play the chord F right which is this shape moved up with a bar okay and then hopefully it'll start to click now say oh yeah I know that one that's that horrible chord that I try to avoid well guess what you can't you have to learn how to play these things okay so there's our E there's our root note if I put that there, it becomes F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and finally D. All right, so if you would have downloaded your paperwork, you will have seen that those inversions that I've just described are on here. Just an example to show you how it works, all right? The D is not on there, the simple D, because of course that's the one that you would be playing open. All right, so that is what the cage system is all about. Now clearly, you know, I mean classical players do it that way all the time. Now let me give you an example. Say for example, um, when you listen to Sultans of Swing by Mark Knopfler, I'm not gonna play all the bits and pieces. Well, the, the main chord sequence for the, um, for the verse is D minor. <laughs> C, B flat, and A. I'm doing it. Um, C, B flat, A. That's the 
that's how you'd play it open. Now he doesn't do it like that. He'll play his D minor there. And you will hear this shape, and you'll hear this a lot in rock and pop. There's your D minor, we know that one. But this one you might not be familiar with. You'll know it by sound. And you'll say, oh yeah, I know that. But what shape is that? You'll just see him doing this. Well, what he's doing there is, because he realizes it's too hard to play a C like this, and it is too hard, nobody would bother doing it. I'm just doing this to show you. That's your C, that's your B flat, and that's your A. He's just taking parts of it. He's taking this bit, the bit of the bar, and that there. Right he's not bothering with the bass string. He's not bothering with this bass string here or this one down here. He's just gonna concentrate on the five, four, three, and two. You get a shit. doing it like that and, and when you see other people playing things like you know it's he's playing what's that there well it's D moved up what's the chord it's D D sharp E F F sharp G now when I was a youngster my younger days um, I wanted to, I bought a book because uh, Beatles complete all my pocket money I wanted to play Here Comes the Sun and I bought this box about 13 quid and it was a lot of money then from a place called Frank Hesse's in Liverpool very very well known music shop all the Beatles and all the bands of that era bought their stuff there including me and I bought this book and I went home because I wanted to learn how to play Here Comes the Sun and it told me that it was in the key of A so I went along and I know A of course and I'm about 13 years old and I'm listening to George Harrison playing it and I'm playing Little Darling It's been a long and I'm playing along with the record and I'm thinking, well, it sort of sounds right, but it doesn't sound like George Harrison. What is wrong with this book? You know, so I took it back to the shop and the, and the gentleman uh, behind the counter, um, he, uh, Jim Gretti, his name was, a very famous man. Um, he served everybody. He could sell anything to anyone. He was a great player. And he explained to me, he took the time and he said, no, son, he goes, you, it, it is in the key of A, but you, you need to use a capo. Now, I didn't know what a capo was. I thought it was something that you put on your head out, you know. And he went on to explain, he goes, no, you, you use one of these. He goes, do you know how to play the shape D? I said, mm. I looked at him with a little bit of disdain. I said, and I said, well, yes, Mr. Gretti, I do. And he said, well, and he explained, he said, well, okay, so we're looking to play an A, aren't we? I said, yes. He goes, well, you play the D shape like this and you go D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, a and he explained about you know as I've just done with you about the and he goes and you put your capo there to, to take the place of this and that shape although it's the shape D as you know is now the chord A and I played it And I said, well, that's brilliant now. Thank you very much. And I said, but the next chord, it's A. I said, the next chord is, 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 a, is a D. And he said, well, you know, play a G shape. And I said, well, that's, that's a G. And he said, no, it's not. And he explained that when you move it up there, as we just did before, that that G shape played there. Remember the root note? That's now a chord D. And I said, well, what about the final chord, the A seventh? And he goes, well, it's not an A seventh when it lives there. It's an E seventh because of you know this type of thing, and, that, and that's how uh, that, that's how I learned how important it was. And as soon as I knew that, it opened up the the whole world of using a guitar capo. Now, of course, you, and it works with with minors and majors and all that sort of stuff. You know, this is just a brief overview of of what of how important it is. I use a uh, side here comes the sun as an example because it's a perfect example okay so we have now discussed the cage system please learn it because it really is important and get to experiment with your capos and of course it's it's even say for example you're playing a song 
and it's in there's three chords in it C F and G and you're a beginner you've never played that much before and you think Christ why have I got to play an F you know I've only been playing for a few minutes you know what, C F and G I can't play C F and G you know so I would say to you I, I would say in, in typical Liverpool I said well calm down don't don't stress yourself I said you're gonna play I said do you know how to play A D and E and you'd say well yeah I know that they were the first ones I learned I said well we'll use those shapes and and chill so I would do this I would say well we'll put a capo on at the what fret what am I C what did I say we were going to do C F and G so I'd put a capo there and I'd say well we're going to play A D and E so while he's playing C F and G you can do that and it'll be and then I would explain what I was doing well that chord there which you know is A as a shape it's not A anymore because it's A there A a sharp B C the F which is the dreaded F we're gonna play a D shape and he'd look at me or she and say well what are you talking about that's a D I'd say no it isn't D D sharp E F and of course the G would be what we know as an E shape here so although I'm playing the, the shapes A D and E I'm actually playing the chords C F so if you've got a mate that's just started playing and there's a song with C, F and G in it and you're doing this and you want them to join in, you can do what I've just done and put the capo on at the third fret and do it that way. Or you could say, somebody say, well, I don't know the A shape and the D and the E. So all right, well, again, fear not. If we put the capo at the fifth fret, and we played our G shape there, there's our G shape, but it's now the chord C. How do we know that? Because this finger, the root note, is playing the note C. It tells us C. If I play the chord C there now, that's gonna be the F. No, it's not, it's a C shape. I can hear you saying something. Well, no, it isn't, because this note here now is pointing at the F note. So it's the shape C, but it's now the chord F. C, F, and the chord G would be the D shape. You'd say, but that's a D. I'd say, no, it isn't. <laughs> and I'd go all the way up the neck and I'd explain that by the time we get to there, it's actually the chord G. Okay? C, F, G. C, F, G. We'll shake it up, baby, now. Okay, C, F, and G there. All right, so there we are, the cage system. But hopefully you can see how useful that is, where you can uh, play, um, you can avoid bar chords by knowing how to use a capo. I do it all the time. I don't want to be struggling and playing horrible bloody bar chord if I can if I can avoid it, you know. And uh, that's why we use them. That's why they were invented. All right. The only uh, style of music where you would never see one being used is is in classical music and and jazz, because you know. It's just you just don't use them in those particular genres of music right on Saturday this Saturday it's Wednesday well no it's not it's Thursday I tried to put this video up last night and completely balls it up I don't know what happened but it, it stopped halfway through so I felt rather silly when people were contacting me so that's why I'm doing it today Thursday on Saturday this Saturday coming um, I'm doing a, a, a live stream and it's a special live stream because it's gonna I'm celebrating my 50th year you believe that 50th year in the music industry continuous never been out of work I've always managed to make a living out of the music business <coughs> so if you're interested in knowing how I've managed to keep going for that long without having to sort of um, go busking and all that sort of stuff then uh, maybe if you tune in we'll find out okay so that's happening on Saturday and any questions you've got whatever it is you can you know ask me ask me about the cage system and ask me about anything you like all right, it's going to be fun. So that's happening on Saturday. Thank you for your company today. Look at all the other masterclasses. I've done eight. This is the final one in the series of eight. Maybe I'll do some more. Um, I'll have to wait and see how we get on. All right, but enjoy this one. Do not, do not, I said do not then. Do not sort of skip bits with this. Try and really get into it because I promise you, you'll be glad you did. All right, so thank you for your company and I shall see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.